go. Hey, here we are. RealLibertyMedia.com. RLMRadio.xyz. Enemy of Facebook. Yes, we have been deemed to be of uh, unsuitable content. Let, let's go read what they say. You got to take uh, Real Liberty Media out of it. What is this called? Let me scroll to the top. Thank you, Facebook, for looking out for everybody. Community standards. Yes, I'm dangerous in what I say from where I say it at. Right here, Real Liberty Media. That's a Freakers Friday, y'all. Welcome in. Come on along. Come back tonight for the Freakers Ball. If you want to be free, hey, Brand Thornton, right on, man. He lacked it. So, yeah, you got to kind of cheat these guys, Facebook, to... uh Get past their algorithms. Anytime you put a link in, first of all, thanks, Brand. I don't like that. Thank you, brother. This is uh, y'all remember Brand Thornton when I was out in Vegas and uh, uh, he and I went to to Denver together. Whoops, better spell it right. Say thank you, brother. Ah, uh, da da. So this is my friend Brand Thornton, um, another minor member of history. And I'm going to go over here. We've got notifications out. Thank you, Grimner. I, uh, I was pushing buttons and forgot to push that one. Well, I'm going to go back over here to the uh, radio log blog page. Uh, Ponder Gander. What matters a Ponder Gander? I'm your host, Vincent Easley. I've got a guest coming in here in a minute or so. Uh, he goes by Chascura in the chat room at Real Liberty Media. And you can, uh, if you're listening... Live, you can uh, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Uh, it's an IRC channel. Uh, just go to Real Liberty Media. There's a little pop up uh, thing you can hit right there. Come right on along. You can make up any old name or just go by numbers or whatever you want to do if you'd like to get involved in this conversation. If you're listening later downstream, uh, hopefully, it's if you're doing that, you're over at BitChute. And if you're on YouTube, just do me a favor. Stop, stop your player, and go, go to bit shoot. Yes, because YouTube is a lot like Facebook, and they like to censor. You know, I just, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have people to look out for our brains and the words that be coming from other folks. Well, here we are. We're Friday, just past noon central by about almost ten minutes of 2019, October the fourth, and. Uh, I, this is the second uh, episode of uh, a 13 and a half episode series. Now, that a half will come clear as we go along. Now, here's one e example of a half. It's, I've got a guest in this time. And I also, well, I'll explain that other part later. So here I am, Vincent Easley the second, and I'm posting in contrast. But I do ask, what are you? What are you? You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. So I do like I did and become the media and take back your future. Journalism, truth, needs def needs defense, and so be the media. Well, you can listen right now or later, but I invite you to come over to chat anytime. Check out Real Liberty Media and, and see some of the uh, folks that be in there. You might uh, like some and might not like others. So, hey, that's the way the world works. Um, I've got the right date in here. Now I'm going to skip on down here and all this fun stuff I got right there. And I'm going to invite you to explore more and journey, join the journey. And here we go. Your path is pretty much, you know, before I go too far, let me do something and help me and you and make this bigger. Because I write it small so it will be in context when I'm putting it there. Come on, get bigger. Why aren't you getting bigger? Blow on it. <laughs> I think that worked. It's not working. It's <laughs> working. Hey, hey glad it. to help. Thank you. All right. That did it. Man. All right. So I say explore more and join the journey. And now I get to think uh, some thanks to some folks along the way through here as I read. And this one, uh, thank you, Frumpy, our very own Frumpy in the chat room. He's uh, given me a little muse and or tunication to put this to portion together. Well, your path is pretty much uh, cut. Ride it out as long as it wanders. Wanders. They still never sound right saying it like that. Wander. Uh, well, 
Keep your eyes on the long distance perspective of things that most other folks let slip by their notice. Yo, know, because twenty years from now you'll be uh, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream. Discover. A lot of people think that uh, thought thought that uh, uh, well, Mark Twain wrote that, but uh, actually it comes from H. Uh, Jackson Brown Jr. P.S. I love you. Well, uh, we're going to come to a point where I'm going to be say thanking you to uh, our anti. Also, it's amazing how all this stuff come together. If you were listening before the. Uh, recording here in the playlist you'll find it here at the radio log and uh, some of that uh, some of those tunes will have a, a little uh, attention to the what we're talking about here today and we'll get to that in just a minute well between <clears throat> between soul and sacrifice beats the heart of civil civilization and if anybody was a Orville fan uh, that uh, Bordas said that if you're a sci-fi fan, given over to what's beyond the what else with a proper homily salute that Digitus Impudicus, <laughs> Digitus Impudicus. Hey, yeah, if you can't if you can't joke them, then well, give them the Digitus Impudicus. Thank you. But given over to a uh, that's a lot of noise on that thing. On your chest quarter. Can you adjust what you did yesterday when we was talking? I had to, we covered so many topics. We were talking about Bible studies and no, 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 abortion. I, and I say no. I say your keyboard. Um, we had uh, we adjusted our sound levels yesterday. Did we oh, figure yeah, that yeah, out? that's a good point. Yeah, give me just a sec. All right. Uh, input. How's that? Let's see. I think so far. All right, well, let me. I'm almost done right here at this point, and a little bit more, and you and I are going to talk. Now, uh, has anybody seen. Uh, well, I bet you have. Might have been a long time since you've seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, but uh, here's a couple of lines out of this. And it seems that in uh, this postmodern world, it really has some gravitational pull for some folks. Well, this guy, Bellog, he says uh, to uh, Indiana Jones, he says, You and I. This I'm still making that big noise back there in the background. Just gonna. I'm, yeah, sorry about that. I'm trying to fix it. All right, I'll wait for you. No problem. This is what you do on live radio. This is only our second broadcast together. There, how's that sounded? Oh. I was just trying to get it so I could monitor the chat at the same time as we're having the discussion. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back over there too in a minute. All right. So Bellog says. Uh, to Andy, he goes, you and I are very much alike. Archaeology is our religion. Yet we, uh, let's see if I can get up here and make, I go with this small. Uh, archaeology is our religion, he says, yet we have both fallen from the pure faith. Our methods, our methods have not differed as much as you pretend. I am but a shadowy reflection of you, he says. It would only take a nudge to make you like me, to push you out of the light. It's going to tie in, too, to some of our conversation. That uh, Oh, Indy says, he says, now, uh, now you're getting nasty, he said, from Raiders of the Lost Ark. 1981, I bet you Gooberzilla, uh, the Hawkster man, he had liked that movie. Well, here's some stuff I like drug and uh, plucked and pulled and put it down right here and... Um, I pull a little uh, muse in the, of these words and lay them down here from Battlestar Galactica. Ginta Hawk, he's, oh man, see I watched that whole series, uh, the, the remake, and I think it was probably the greatest series remake and one of the greatest series, period, that, that they ever made. I, I like sci-fi, big sci-fi fan. But anyways, yeah, very, uh, I thought it was pretty unique how they uh, they ended that series. One big circle, but I don't know. We're going to talk about that. Just Gooder and I are, are going to be talking about that today, about the, this question of life and what we got. But what did I pull out here? 
one more uh, bit of words here, and then Chascura and I will take uh, control of the airways and demonstrate to you something. Well, we won't demonstrate to you where where is tomorrow gone. To ask the question is not an answer of when. People look for complicated answers when terrible things happen. Calculated risk as time marches on. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Time marches on. The axe cuts just the same like lines in the sand on to extinction. Give me tomorrow. This ain't last year. Oh, death for whom the bell tolls. In the fight. And here's the anti added. Thank you. This per fits perfect. So I'll have to start from the beginning to say it. Oh, death. For whom the bell tolls. In the fight the ship has sailed. Bound by law dying. Lies in the public domain. Key. Ah. Fucking pool. Whoa, mule. Thanks, Anti. Muse from the remake series of Battlestar Galactica. And a tad bit of a book called Extinction by DJ Moly. Well, that's part of the artunication that I pulled out where I go out there and grab other people's words and make them my own. Just good to welcome back, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, a lot of people can't seem to have a conversation on uh, different ideas and notions and want to fight about it, you know? Cause, <laughs> yeah, hey, I know the feeling. Yeah, I mean, if you believe something, it's got to be true, right? If it wasn't true, you wouldn't believe it, wouldn't you say? Well, that's that's kind of the problem with belief right there, is that believing it is kind of a special form of pretending it's true instead of like actually being open to the idea that it might not be. Yeah, huh. You know, Grammy Mary here at Real Liberty Media, she likes to call it belive, with a L-I-E, belie, believe. I mean, that's technically more correct. That is technically how it's spelled. That's a good point that she's made. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, what is uh, what is history, anyways? But uh, what was written down by the victors? Uh, as a matter of fact, true history has been covered up and destroyed. I just look at, you know, how they got rid of all the books and stuff down in uh, when they took over Mexico when Cortez came. Well, that's part of it. I mean, that's that's definitely a component of history. Like, there's have you ever heard of the book Q that the Bible is theoretically based on? No, I don't think I have. There's a theoretical book that's known to scholars as Q only, and it's the original form of modern Christianity that, I mean, when they had the Nicene Convention or whatever, that's when they kind of agreed to start burning that one and have the Jesus one instead. Wow. So, so I mean, there are pre-Jesus forms of Christianity that are kind of documented. Well, I, I could uh, go into that a little bit further, but uh, first of all, this book Q, it's a theoretical, so... They've imagined. It's a theoretical book that's referenced, but we don't have a copy. It's it's one of those that like it's it, it like if something was written down in the Iliad as being you know the most popular version of. I see. Yeah, it's so, that kind of a thing. Who would have mentioned that then through history? Did, would it go back to uh, Josephus or? Um... No, it would. Uh, Josephus is kind of like he was a Jewish guy who was working for the Romans so he's like a translator and tour guide and diplomat kind of like a fixer basically yeah right um, but he was journal. yeah so Josephus is the second guy to like he's the only guy that specifically says Jesus was the Christ and he's the one that everybody points to as the reference of oh that must make it true right because like it's basically ignorant of what the Roman tactics were for dealing with whatever places they invaded. So what they would do is they would have a statue of Caesar that they would bring with them, and they would put it in whatever local temple of whatever city they invaded, and they'd say, okay, you can worship your old gods, but you got to worship this guy as your god, too, and you got to pay taxes. So it was, I mean, they, the I don't know how well documented this is as the basis for the, um, the Zealot uprising in, in Jerusalem. Um, do you know what the Zealot uprising is? Uh, I guess I should. Um, it's basically when the Romans invaded Israel, or what they called Palestine, um, they went into the temple, they put in the statue, they, they're trying to do what they normally do, but this was a different kind of temple. The holy thing isn't, wasn't a statue, there was a no graven images commandment, so the holy thing was the book. So, it, I mean, there's a, there's a plausible case, and it's... I think the book is Caesar's Messiah. I'd have to look up who the author's name is. Hmm. But this case has been made better than I, I can make it here, that, that um, this was 
basically a Roman attempt at a coup d'etat of here's how we take over this local religion, turn it into a thing that is, you know, render unto Caesar instead of, you know, fight Caesar kind of philosophies and that kind of stuff. Hey, so I'm going to set books. my headset down. Excuse me. I'm going to go uh, over here and uh, get a book. I'll be right back. I'm going to I'll be right back. Of course. But yeah, anyway, the the presentation of this slaves obey your masters, Jews render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, um, completely absent of any reference to the civil war that would have been raging around Jesus, makes that kind of story where it's really peaceful, really pastoral. He's feeding thousands of people. There's no mention of any physical conflicts where they're, you know, fighting and there's battles or whatever that we know were happening from the archaeology side of this stuff. Um, that that's the kind of thing that makes this look plausible if you want to describe it as Roman propaganda. So it's it's an interesting part of history. It's one of those things where you can't say everything is cut and dry. But given what we do know about the Romans and their operating tactics and what they would do in the battlefield and this, this that, and the other thing, um, it's a very interesting case of what might be some of the origins of what modern Christianity is. Yeah, it's a lot of speculation. There's, uh, uh, and, uh, Joe was he's, uh, I think, an accredited historian. People want to make the case that uh, was the man, um, Jesus of Nazareth, and, of course, his name wasn't said uh, in the, like, Jesus or Jesus. I mean, Jesus when you see his writings, he's kind of on the nose about it. It's one of those, like, it, it, he mentions Jesus, and then he the next sentence or the next paragraph, I think it is, I forget which, but it's like, and he was the Christ, which... Romans don't, like, there was no concept of a Christ in Roman cognition. Like, they, they just didn't have that idea. So for him to say that is just kind of weird. Yeah. Especially, he was writing it in Latin. Um, Latin or Greek, I forget which. Well, both languages were, were used uh, pretty close together there. Yeah. Uh, so the Bible, I guess, uh, you got Latin, Greek, and uh, Hebrew. Well, the Bible, the else. texts themselves are Greek, ancient Hebrew, and Aramaic, or I should say ancient Aramaic, because there's a modern, or a couple of modern surviving forms in different, like the um, yeah. Amharic is kind of very closely related. They're, they're Semitic languages. They're actually very closely related to Arabic, too. And that's, which is, uh, is that, yeah. what was the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls? Were they written in, uh, in Arabic? Uh, I think those were Aramaic co also, co but don't quote me on that. Or, or were they con conifers? Was it, was it, no, was Cuneiform was thousands of years before that. Like you got to remember, like the city of Jericho was supposed to be something like thirteen thousand years old or something like that. No, I, I guess ten thousand years old. I, I might be mixing that up with Gobekli Tepe, but yeah, I, I think it's about ten thousand years old. And that's like the oldest. And Jericho is also a really interesting case because they have looked for walls and have not found any. So like that story kind of seems nonsensical, like the marching around walls and the walls collapse thing. Like yeah. what walls? There's not. There's just nothing there to yeah, find. Yeah, just because you don't find evidence of some walls somewhere doesn't mean. Well, anything. I, mean, I mean, look at hold up. Look, look at uh, Africa. I have, that back then in all the Middle East was lush. I mean, vegetation, trees, grass, uh, fat cattle on no, every that's hill. True. Now all that. But and the I claim mean, about this, this, walls these, is they were the best. These, these, you know, this happened rather rapidly in as far as you know times concerned. So. A lot is covered over. Um, the, the oh, yeah, of course. Pyramid. But even accounting for and that. And here in the Americas, even here in the United States, down into uh, Mexico, Central America, and South America, uh, and where the jungle is covered over, you know, there's stuff lost there that still not hasn't been found. Then we got mounds oh, yeah, here in the Americas. Oh, yeah, they've been discovering a lot with satellite imaging recently, too. Yeah, that's cool. Then they got, you know, the mounds here, uh, mound, the Toltec, uh, what was yeah, the name? Yeah, in Arkansas, uh, what is it, the Hopi ones? The Hopi Indians, I think? No, Hopis were out uh, more towards, like, uh, Arizona and New Mexico that way. Um, uh, Arkansas... No, the, I, I, they I remember, the, like, I lived in St. Louis for a bit, and I visited yeah. some kind of a mountain that I think was a Hopi Indian mountain. I think yeah, that was at least the name given to it. Yeah, Flower, maybe Flower Mountain. What's the name of it? I forget. But anyways, yeah, they was... Uh, uh, up by St. Louis was a humongous uh, trade center up there in, in uh, Big City. Yeah. But there were different ones, and... So they've got these epigraphs that, you know, people didn't even know. They were like, wow, that's a big hill. I wonder why that's here all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, they hauled the yeah. dirt. Uh, a, lot of yeah, labor, a lot of things yeah, have changed like the in the Yeah, there's like the pyramid in China. Have you heard of 
Which one? The pyramid in China. Emperor Qin, I think, is his burial mound or something like that, where it's like, oh, oh yeah. why is this mountain square? And then they start doing surveys, and then they find an entrance, and then they oh, find yeah. like a yeah. bunch of mercury, because there was literally a river of mercury is, in it. Is that where the uh, the all those uh, terracotta... Uh, I think they were at the entrance on like the the just one of the faces of it, rather than on the inside of it. Like, because I I don't think they've actually excavated the inside of it. Well, I I remember it's been decades ago when uh, that was discovered. That was so cool, and they had pictures yeah. of all these guys. They each individual terracotta uh, statue was modeled after an actual person. Yeah, yeah. Each one of them and they separate. still don't know how they did it. It's one of those, like, they must have had some way of casting the face and then getting the, the clay done right oh, away. Man, you know, artists, there's, uh, there's, uh, the creativity of man is just fantastic. It's nothing to assume that there were a legion of artists that had the ability to, uh, to create such works of art. Well, yeah, they, especially in China, because they had the ability to support a population of them. Yeah. It's very interesting, uh, the mankind, the distribution, and what uh, people call races, the different races where, you know, actually humans are are all the same race. We're not sub-races. There used to be... I mean, we're uh, technically all the same species. Right. But at the same time, we know that there were different kinds of humans. Like, there were, Neanderthal very, would have very, been a human. Well, like the, you say we know, but... There's an assumption because uh, you know you've never walked well, up. Well, there is the data head. to support there's, the assertions. There, there's also so, data in, in mainstream scientists that would tell you that if uh, um, the uh, uh, not the Crow Magnum, the uh, the Neanderthal was alive today, you could uh, walk up to him face to face and shake his hand and not even know it. I mean, we're we're looking well, at thing that's variation in, in in skull structure, size. And, you know, bigger heads doesn't mean uh, smarter. You know, you a bigger brain necessarily. Oh, no. All right. So, but they were very different. Like, they had bigger noses than us because they were just sure. more adapted for physically dealing with the, cli the cold climate. They had much bigger eyes, and that's kind of – I think I've heard some theory about, like, they were nocturnally hunting or something like that, or at least had the option to. Um, but the thing that's really interesting about Neanderthal is, or Neanderthal, however is yeah. the proper way to say it, right. um, it is that here. everybody outside of like the southern par portion of Africa is between one and four percent related to Neanderthal. Like literally everyone. Did you ever read the book series uh, Clan of the Bear Cave? Uh, Jinem Aou, if I said her last name right. Clan of the Bear Cave. No, I haven't. Uh, oh man, yeah, that's a uh, that's pretty fantastic series. Said. Uh, I didn't realize when I first started reading that the, these other people that they were talking about were Neanderthal. I, I like to say Neanderthal. I'm just going to say it that way. Uh, I don't think I'm yeah. actually too wrong in saying it like that. Right? People, enough people yeah, say it. I mean, that is the proper yeah. pronunciation for English. I think it's like it's named after a German village, and they all yeah. say Neanderthal. But that's, yeah. I mean, we've been saying Neanderthal for 100 years now at this point, so we might as well stick with it. Yeah, I speak American anyways, by golly. <laughs> yeah, American should be spoken properly. Marcan. So I have this book here just to, just to give a, uh, so we can put it in the record here. It's a Josephus. It's the complete works with enlarged type and illustrated, too. Just what I need. Um, Josephus is complete works. It includes a life of uh, Flavius Josephus. The Antiquities of the Jews, The Wars of the Jews, Discourse Concerning Hades, Seven D Dissertations, Table of Jewish Weights and Measures, A List of Ancient Testimonies and Records Cited by Josephus, and Texts of All the Old Testament Parallel to uh, Josephus' Histories. History. Well, there it is. There's a big, long contents list in there and notes all throughout I reckon I think uh, if I was to be a bet man notes in there and everything else you know got the uh, paper clips but it's been a long time since I cracked in that we're not really uh, in here for a discussion on so much of uh, uh, well I don't know what would I would say that I would exclude in that because I guess we're really not excluding anything somebody said something of a real liberty media. Grimner said, cave, cave bear. Bear cave. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, clan of the cave bear. 
That's right. Clan of the Bear Cave. Valley of the Horses. And uh, there was another one. But anyway, so I was assuming when I started reading that that it was they were uh, the peoples there were black people and white people, and the, the black people was the uh, ones that uh, found the little girl and uh, took her in as the orphan. But no, I come to find out later on, they entered. She introduced uh, a black man into the story, and uh, so oh yeah, obviously they're oh they're Neanderthal. I get it. Yeah, maybe I was just slow and dense. It was. Uh, a long time ago when I read it. But yeah, I still and that's that's kind of one of those like, oh, that's the origin of black and white, and that's that's one of the things that's come up recently is that the the pale skin of northern Europeans is kind of a response to the adding a lot of grains to our diets, and also being in a cold climate where we're covered up a lot of the time. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, the, a lot of uh, environmental factors. Um, Yes, and that's like over the last 10,000 years kind of a thing, rather than, like, I think it's 40,000 years is the accepted timeline of Neanderthals well, largely starting to go extinct. Well, you, you're using words and you're trying to appeal to authority and give creditation into these numbers. And I mean, they're, uh, they're arbitrary. I, the, I don't care how many letters a guy has behind his name and how many books he's read and all that. No, stuff. no, it's never about they're, the authority. Yeah, no, 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 I'm just saying because the there's, there's different ideas on time, so you can't you can't include that statement right, with me but we do to have say, a consistent measure of time, and according we, to the we data that we have, that they have, assuming that we're not just incapable of assessing reality, and we can actually know things, this is Something. what would be the case. No, yeah. the time, the whole time measurement thing, that's that's very arbitrary uh, and not reliable. Well, and any, none, of, none of the methods, and I, I've gone through some lists here of some things with you, uh, the carbon-14 dating. Uh, the uranium. Oh band. yeah, this is one of the uh, younger no, creationist they're, things. They're they very, understand the very plan. unreliable. They can. Uh, well, it's they, unreliable past twenty thousand years is the thing. Well, you that's can, why it's unreliable. It's unreliable it's not to unreliable test. Period. It's just unreliable yeah. past a certain threshold. They can test the, a live mollusk or a clam, and have it uh, listed as being uh, thirty something thousand years old. Whatever, yeah, they can, and that's, that's what, but, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's one of those, dead. It's not, since they no, know that, they don't rely solely on carbon dating. That's just a thing yeah. that everybody has accounted for. Yeah, that's not, that, none the of those, they, not. they can test and test, and they'll get different numbers every time they test, and they'll go just uh, put them in there and get a mean number or, or take the one that they're right. hoping but what for. they do is they take the average of what they've tested across yeah. the different materials Which, they're testing, because, it, I mean, it, the, the carbon dating, for example, what they're doing is they're testing how many isotropes of different, I think it's nitrogen breaks down into carbon, is the thing that they're testing for. Half-lives, so there's different like over, methods, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's different half-lives of different kinds of atoms, and over time, like the protons and neutrons and whatever in an atom will just, from the energy that's in there, will split it apart, and it's just a statistical thing over time, like uranium breaks down into lead, so in order to test the purity of your uranium, you're testing for the amount of lead in it, um, and it's, like, that's actually the origin of like all of the the clean room stuff so that they could get accurate measurements was a way of so the guy that figured out that lead in the gasoline was such a big problem was actually trying to test uranium and he kept getting his samples messed up because he was basically just trying to count how much of the uranium had turned into lead in a specific you know a rock sample a soil sample type of thing but because the entire environment of the entire continental United States was polluted by leaded gasoline. It was a very difficult task to even rule out the amount of lead that was atmospherically there. So, I mean, this is this is kind of a deep wormhole if you want to dive into it. Well, I but mean, there's um, a lot of specifics in, in there, but I'm telling you, measurements and all, all these ideas of... I mean, especially yeah, when you're trying to say, listen, hold on, when you're trying, when you're trying to say, yeah, a lot of them are not usable. Uh, as a matter of fact, well, uh, I would say, as schedules. like uh, you can't say we're going to be there at one o'clock according to carbon dating. It's not, it's not that specific. It's, it gets it down to a couple of years kind of tolerance. It's not, it's not an exact dating thing. Plus but or what minus you're to 150,000 years yeah, or something like that. No, 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 no. With the carbon dating, remember, I've been you're ridiculous. not going past Listen, is what I'm trying to no, say is, is all of these measurements here that they come up with. Uh, they look how big the universe is and all the possibilities of measurements. And then you say, well, I I can look at this thing here for a lifetime and measure that, and then the next feller can measure it after that and uh, take a, a means. But is there a constant? 
There, you don't know yeah. what the constant has been. No, you don't know. Actually, that means do. that means that you that means that you are are going about it in a, in a uh, observation as a unifor, uniformitarianism. I said that right. Didn't run out of wind, right? That everything's consistent and and steady state, smooth well, decline. Well, it's not quite that simple anymore. The science has moved on from that point. Yeah. But the, the constant that is the 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 yardstick that everything is measured against is the speed of light. Yeah, but that's it's not the same even speed that electrons propagate. It's the same speed that particles move across. You know, uh, transmit their force. It's it's the same speed at which gravity travels through the universe. It's the fastest possible speed that something can move through space. But it's not like if you're at one end of the universe and something else is at the other end of the universe. Those two things can be moving apart from each other faster than the speed of light. And not be breaking that because the expansion of the universe is something that is, I mean, the further away from whatever, the further away from it, you're, or the faster away from it you're going. You, you, the expansion is a continuously accelerating. And that's yeah. one of those, like, you can look at, I mean, basically all of the galaxies and see that they're all turning red faster than they should be because they're accelerating outwards. And literally, the space where the light is coming to us from is becoming a bigger space, so it's becoming bigger light and the wavelength is becoming a bigger wavelength as it comes to us from that acceleration outwards. It's kind of a mind fuck, but we could basically look at that, wind the clock backwards and say, okay, how long would it take until it was like all at one space? Because it's accelerating away from us. So if we wind the clock backwards, it's coming back to us. And when we do that, it's about 13.7 billion years to get everything into one space. How, how like, really, let me ask you how the then uh how did this start at one little central point then and expand it's not a central point that's kind of the mind fuck and, it's literally okay wait a minute hold on the universe is how, also the center how did of the everything universe. get from one point and then go out of, away from everything else and keep going out towards uh where there's well, nothing else out out there it's going to something that uh to a place where there's nothing right and taking that space well, slowly but yeah, so you can't done. have an explosion just go boom and then become orderly. Yeah, well, that's the, the misconception is that it's an explosion because the description of it is the then. big bang, quote yeah. unquote. We'll call it an and it's not a then. big bang. It's just kind of like a big, like it's not a balloon popping. It's the balloon suddenly becoming a bigger balloon. So all of the gas in it is rushing away from it, and it's kind of a vacuum inside the balloon kind of thing. It has to be a little bit of order in the chaos, I guess, right? Well, it, order emerges from chaos as a pattern of it. <laughs> You'd make a good government, man, I think. You ever <laughs> I don't hate myself enough. <laughs> you ever considered going to work for the county extension office, sir? <laughs> oh, fuck no. Maybe, fuck run, those guys. maybe run for... No, I'll catch it. But hey, do, me, do, me, hey shit, do, me a, yeah. do me a favor and hold the, the F bombs off for, I mean, it ain't nothing but a word, but some people that would just go right to them and scare them plumb to death. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, some people that maybe to that point right there probably aren't listening to this anymore anyway, so I guess uh, for yeah, no worries. sake, who's, who are we going to bother <laughs> by saying it? There's Flash somebody. He's in chat. He's uh, one of my... Uh, Hiya, Flash somebody. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a friend of mine. And me and him been doing this stuff here, talking words on the radio for a few years now. He and I. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Yeah. You can see why you do it. He tried to break up. We're like friends, like you know, like what do you call it? Like a friend that's kind of like a brother that's like on the internet that you used to talk to on Skype every morning, and like you're like, man, it's my brother, fuck with brother, right? He'll for show. Sure. Nope. Yeah. But so we've gone through I mean, things, and we've you know. Me, he and I have a lot of stuff we don't agree on, but you know what? We're just like, so what? Well, it don't stop us yeah. from being friends. And sometimes we say words, and especially the words come out of my mouth, uh, are misconstrued. Not uh, maybe I didn't enunciate it right or well enough, but there's misunderstandings. But we can talk. But there is certain guidelines. You know, you don't uh, as far as you know being friends and discussion and stuff like that but a lot of people don't follow any kind of guidelines or rules you know it's a 
yeah. because of the way the world is. It's a fallen world. It's a, death comes. Death. The death. Away well, that fallen world all. thing is just part of the Christian mythology of it. It's, it's it, what part of the world is fallen? Like the sun's still shining. There's still leaves on the trees. It's yeah. still like it's still the world. Yeah. It'll still be the world without us if we all die. Okay, if you had no. It, how did you get to these races? I'm going to call them races, the different uh, subspecies or whatever, or man. Isolation of a gene pool. From species. Uh, all, it's just an evolution yeah, thing. I, and all, well, I would call it de-evolution because you can't take a chihuahua. No, 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 no because you cannot, it's changing Wait a minute. Listen. Yeah, hold on a minute, buddy. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on a minute, buddy. When, when uh, we come to a point, and I'm going to have a counter here, you got to wait for me to say something. And because okay. you're running over the top of me and then running off after, and, and not even uh, going and, and nailing this one point down. So anyway, speciation, then uh, we'll call it, you say evolution, I, I call it de-evolution because you're not getting any more information. Where are you going to get it? You can't, uh, uh, you can't, I was going to say, you, can't, you cannot take and breed a wolf out of a cho- from a chihuahua. You know, they had a common ancestor and then speciation well you cannot culminate even if you took all the different types of people around the world you could not culminate them back into their ancestors if people think that cavemen were stupid well they well, come yeah, upon hard times their their brain yeah, function was forward, pretty good a matter of fact if somebody had to uh, uh survive with the skills of a caveman that they would surely die uh, in the well, in today's sure. world Sure, there are people I, that do that. Kind there's of some people that uh, the majority of people just like the majority of people would yeah. surely die. Yeah, I'll, I'll side with that. Who was it talking about children the other day? And it was like, are you kidding me? The, the people, no, they. they I, I think on purpose, people are being dumbed down, and there's a lot of methods for that. Do you, do you think that uh, somebody could go to school and graduate 12 years of public school and? St- not be able to read. I've seen it happen. It just boggles my mind. I read and wrote before I went to school, before I started school. Yeah. And I just can't well, imagine. I mean, there's differences in cognition. Like, uh, what is it? Dyslexia is a thing. There's also, um, oh, what's it called? It's not dysnumeracy, but there's one that's um, dyscalculus, I think is the word, where you can't actually process numbers the way that other people do. And so the people that have this disorder are linguistically, like, they'll learn like it's different words and they have to add the words together to get a special kind of sentence if they're going to do math and they're just always terrible come, at math. Can't that come off folks. Fat Albert, didn't it? Let's see. No, no, no. That's, ab, like, that's a ab, real disorder. Ab, well, I'm just kidding. You're ab, do, ba, de, ba. It, I thought that's what it was going to be. <laughs> burp, burp, burp. Hey, hey, hey. It's Fat Albert. Oh, you know what? I, hey, my, hey, my, hey. There you go. That's pretty good. But I don't think we can... <laughs> we might get... Uh, Censored if we uh, we talk about Bill Cosby because he's a uh, <laughs> was he still funny? Well, Is he funny still after knowing that he was a uh, a creep? You know, I think the the jokes can be good jokes without him having to have been a good person. Yeah, but it's just one of those like knowing what he did. It's difficult to go back and appreciate it. Hmm. Now, what about Robin Williams? Uh, on the uh, on the other hand, you know, a man of uh, that brought so much joy and laughter to uh, millions of people, probably, and he himself yeah, and then, somehow suffered to the point of uh, uh, taking his own life. Well, that's that's just the that I mean, suicide is what we should expect when the experience of pain overcomes the ability to deal with pain. It's just one of those. Like, I'm glad that we got him for as long as we did, rather than just had that he ended his life, you know, his mid 60s or whatever it was. You think? That's like that's an average life expectancy already. He already had a really great career. We all know his name. We all knew and loved his work. Like that's so, already a win. You you said that uh, suicide. What did you say was a natural? Or an expected. Suicide is the natural result when the experience of pain overcomes the ability to I, deal I, with pain. No, most most creatures, man and beast alike, fight till the tooth and nail, as I've seen before. Uh, yeah, recording. in order to keep to a life, keep you know, living. is a normal life. But I've also seen animals try to commit suicide. Like there's a lot of cases, like the the sun bears that they have in Asia, where they're harvesting the the gallbladder out of them where they're keeping the bear locked in like a mummy kind of cage around it the whole damn time. 
those bears, if they let them out, they will try to kill themselves. How do they try to kill themselves? They don't have opposing thumbs. Like, do they have opposing it, thumbs? They don't have opposing thumbs, but they have claws built into their hands. So what do they like, do? Just rip the right artery and they're gone. So they actually have cognitive... Uh, co they know, yeah. know enough to cut your, their damn throat, their own throat with the claws. Yep. And there's yep. some documentation on this? Oh, yeah. Or is it's, this... it's one of those, like, it makes you look hard at what Pete is doing and saying, oh, maybe they have a point. Like, it's kind of a torturous nightmare of what they go through for that Chinese medicine bullshit that they're actually... And I don't... nothing against Chinese people. It's just, like, there are elements of Chinese culture that are fucked up and need to be fixed. There's, like that yeah, there's, tradition. Horn. there's tradition from all sorts of people. Yeah, tradition. It's, it's, yeah, it's, tradition. Well, it's yeah worth absolutely. Tradition. Right, I agree. Yeah, but... But on the other hand, you can't go and force somebody that's been keeping bears and uh, cutting their pancreas out and uh, eating their liver or whatever for yeah. countless... I think uh, it's gallbladder, and I think the thing is that they wow. can cut half yeah. of it out and the other half will regrow the rest. Uh -huh. So they just keep doing that for years at a time. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that. But like I said, do do we, do you and I have the right to go over there and say... Hey, stop that! Don't do that. That bear no more. And, and well, forcibly neither of us stop them. That, but we do have the right to mock them from here. Yeah, we do have the yeah. right to say that's stupid and evil and wrong. Yeah, that's well within our rights. Absolutely. I I think uh, I people should talk, and I encourage people to talk, and especially if uh, I think it should be said and heard, especially if it's wrong. I think is what I was going to say with that. Wrong ideas need yeah. to be heard, too. And there's never, ever a time that words should ever be censored. I'd be uncensored over on Facebook. Uh, they don't like uh, Real Liberty Media now. It's beyond their community standards and guidelines. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I can't imagine why. I just, uh, like I just discovered... Like we're all not liberal, whatever. Yeah, they, I just discovered that uh, this morning that they gig me, man. They scrub my stuff. I was like, what? Because I, yeah, I was like, what happened? I noticed it in my radio log blog that uh, this content is not available. What What do you mean it ain't? And I go like, well, did they remove it? Can they, you know, I thought the person's timeline there over at Becky's maybe, I don't know. So I was like, nah. Huh. And uh, yeah. so I discovered it, and they don't, uh, they don't like people to say things. Could anybody ever be yeah. afraid of what somebody else has to say? Are you afraid to, that uh, might poison the mind of their children or, or uh, might cause them I mean, to cast doubt upon their own be faith? Valid, be afraid of that. Like, we have religions that we know can't all be true because they're too conflicting between each other. So, I mean, Buddhism probably isn't correct if Christianity is correct. Well, kind of a thing. You're, you're saying that it has to be one or another, and it, you, you're... Well, it, according not, to the interpretation, uh, hold on. Okay. Right. So, like it, it, what they're saying is like I'm just saying what they said. Well, yeah, you're saying what they said, but that doesn't make it a fact. You're you're parroting oh, in course. a sense. That's kind of this, my point. Yeah, these ideologues uh, of opposition, and, and I think you know. Well, you got to give an explanation for origins, you know. So, uh, if there's no God, there's no uh, absolute uh, condition of uh, right and wrong. So then it becomes yeah. situational ethics. To is it okay to kill now well, or then? Is it okay? Is it okay to exists. eat the liver of the bear, the the gallbladder, or whatever? Uh, you know, where where is, is it any worse than eating a chicken? It's wrong. In my, yeah, it's absolutely well, wrong if to you harm. Kill the bear and the bear is gone. The bear is no longer going to experience the loss of its gallbladder or experience the slavery of being tied up in chains or whatever and having that cut out of it constantly. If it's not Having the experience, that moral condition of that situation is removed. Then, yeah, I mean, go ahead, eat the rest of the bear too. Yeah, I, I was a, I'm kind of ashamed, really, that I'm not now, but uh, a vegetarian for a while. I thought it's a much better life. I feel a lot better. I mean, ultimately, I, mean, it's a good I don't think it's necessarily better. I don't think it's viable for the whole human species. Like, there's how many? There's six billion of us, seven billion of us now. There's adaptations. And we're going to farm the entire surface of all arable land in order to get enough soybeans that we can eat that instead of cows? Well, Fuck off. Soybeans like, take just, the that, way. That, that, 
Who was talking and about especially that? Consider with the, the monocrop kind of agriculture that we have, would be killing as many or more animals. Like how many deer fawn would get chewed up by combines that didn't see them because they're lying down in the grass type of deal. But, was... And that meat would automatically be wasted and not accessible to humans anymore for our benefit. It's just like, it's, it's impractical, it's not well thought out, but it's a very good, serious first attempt. Well... It's one of the, like when, uh, you know, a thousand years ago when people didn't have any other option than to stop eating the things that they could perceive to oh, be I alive. And... Yeah. Hold on, hold on. See, you're you're assuming soybeans, right, and corn. Well, this well, is I, a I problem. Hold on. All right, stop, 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 stop. Let me talk. All right. Okay. So, soybeans, corn, rice, all this stuff, and the majority now of all the processed food delivered as feed, not food, feed to your grocery store from the manufacturer direct to you and a lot of that stuff has poisons in it chemicals and i mean you look at uh, margarine and for an example uh garbage but it's cheap just like the stuff they pull out of the ground is cheap horsepower well transportation all that that makes it all possible but while people are doing this they want to make profit right and there goes that uh well how far will you go will you uh, what what amount of harm are you willing to allow to another to benefit yourself? There's a question. Now, some people come to this point, well, that's just the way things are done. Uh, and justify it in their mind. But if we were, <clears throat> with the technology we have today, I remember where I just came to mind. I was just listening to a, uh, a broadcast in uh, April 2014 at the Bundy Ranch. And I had... Uh, Chuck O'Chelly, he was my uh, uh, producer for me out in the field. Had Ryan Bundy on. Had uh, um, uh, Michael Hoff. Uh, and had uh, oh, from Dallas. Dallas, what's your name? Matt Mark. Oh, oh, sorry, it'll come to me. Uh, anyways, so they they're talking about the food and stuff, right? Well, I mean, with technology we got today, how big an area do you think it would take contain that? Uh, you could produce all the the necessities right there, um, even your grains. You well, know. how long of a time scale are we looking at? Because how many times can you farm the same plot of land and get the same crops out of it? Well, that's what I'm saying. You're not going to be farming any land necessarily. You've got a like a little uh, tower that you're uh, growing. There's lots of examples of those. Um, that gum. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your name. I'm gonna go. I have to look it up. Um, no, I can't. Well, if you can try get the like nutrients and all that stuff right, I mean, theoretically, they're looking at doing, like, nuclear sub-sized agricultural things in space to get people to Mars and back. Because it's one of those, like, if you could grow enough potatoes and have, I don't know, maybe some kind of a shrimp or something like that that lives in there symbiotically, so it's using the oxygen that the plants are generating and providing a little bit of the nutrients, and it's sufficiently nutritious for the people that would be eating it that kind of a deal is what people are looking seriously at. And theoretically, if you have the right get-up, you can do it in a very small space. The problem is, how long can that be sustained? How long can that reaction continue reacting? Well, right here on Earth, you know, we're not in a closed system. If you've got like a uh, a container thing that you want to grow in, it's easy yeah. to add. If you're going to, you could look at uh, uh, aquaponics beyond your uh, yeah. hydroponics. Yeah, you know, people grow that hydroponic weed and, and can't Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I was trying to junk. reference with the, the shrimp thing. Uh -huh. um, organic, what is it? Ah, oh, dadgummit. I've drawn a blank on who I'm looking for. Drew, uh, was it, no, it's Chuck Horton was on, and uh, and Ch uh, Chuck O'Chelly, he, uh, he was the producer for the broadcast, but uh, out... I've drawn together uh, the other part of this half series and this 13 and a half episodes. Well, after this part of this, I have another part, which is I will be uh, uh, coincidentally the time. I don't think it's coincidence. I think time kind of falls in if you uh, if you don't try to disturb it in the, for your own benefit. Just kind of like get on it and go in the right direction. comes together. But anyways, I digress. Um the Bundy yeah. Ranch uh, situation. It, uh, the trial was supposed to have started and kicked off here uh, two years ago, October 10th. 
the one October event, I think, is what they've decided to call the uh, mass shooting in Las Vegas where all those people were killed out there by that guy, Steve Paddock. And he had yeah. bought a gun. He had a place up in Mesquite. And so, uh, but um, I, I'm going to be covering the, the week. Like for this week, I'll, I'll pick up. I've got some stuff to uh, uh, re relate back in history, back to 2017, and then also I'll be going back into uh, 2014. And then as the dates come along together for the week of, uh, although this is October, the week of uh, during the month of April, those days, there's uh, be some events that I will bring in and in place. And so this is another of. Uh, my rewrites at uh, telling the Bundy Ranch story. So I, I'm just going to keep gotcha. doing it and telling it until I finally get it. It's getting easier, I, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, it's an uh, important thing to have a good account of, too. Yeah. Well, it, writing is, is not natural to me at all. And it may be obvious, especially to somebody that writes. Uh, it is getting a little easier. It is, I'm doing some different methods, right? Uh, one thing I, I've i done for a while and I like to do is take and uh, uh, pull and pluck these words out out of uh, all this that where they're at out there in the world and songs and sounds and uh, music and movies and even what... Yeah, learning from the best. I actually have you quoted over here in my notes that I used uh, oh, shit. Our, bad, last, I our last broadcast together. Uh, you had said something and I used it into the blog and I or the, maybe it was one oh, cool. after. It's uh, all these notes are long. It's up in here. Where are you at? It says uh, just good in it. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, if you send it to that account, right? I think send it to Chosky Rectum. Must yeah, just fire. a fun note to anybody who's listening and going, "What the fuck did he just say?" It's just one of those like, in order to differentiate, I have different accounts on this chat room thing. I'll just add different asshole acronyms to the end of my normal screen name, Choscura. Well, so Choscura is Choscura, Choscura asshole, etc. I'm Vinny in the chat room, and I, I, I always add something on to there. Am I, what am I now? I'm a Vene Verte, I think it is. And that's Spanish. I came to see you. So the variations. I did one was uh, Vinny to war is, but it was a play there. Benito Ores. Ha ha. Lots, of, I don't know, maybe about 300 different nicks, or maybe getting close to 500 IVs. I didn't even keep track of them. It's been interesting. Yeah. I'm expecting somebody within a half hour. But I want to. No, when, listen. Well, I'm going to have somebody show up here, uh, and I'll give you just a minute. You're good. Yeah, so I'll mute up and. Uh, We've come up to an hour, but I, I don't think uh, we're quite ready to close out. I'll probably take, uh, we'll take a little bit more time here, and then uh, I'm going to go, I'll, I'll close out solo. Solo, okay. you can't hear me, huh? But uh, we, Sounds uh, cool we, to me. we can go, uh, I think we got another 30 minutes in between me and you here, or 45. I, I don't know how long it's, I didn't really finish my, my written record over here. <clears throat> one section, uh, I just do it all up there, and I've got to go back and unjumble it. Yeah. So sometimes from writing, you know, man, I I tell you, I would spend 45 minutes trying to write one paragraph, and then I get in like, what should it be at or to or on or you know, and then it's like, that's right, that's right, yeah, well, either way, and then then you get in these passive uh, use of passive verbs and stuff and. Like man, I I quit school when I was young and, and uh, hit the road. I didn't take uh, any formal <laughs> like education, what? but I've read and read. My I mean, I did a little bit of formal, but yeah. So I, I yeah, I read a lot in life, and uh, you think the writing would stick to you somehow just by the fact that you read a lot. That I never paid any attention to the punctuation and all the specifics, you know, because I understood the words I was seeing in front of my eyes, but now so I yeah. I start reading uh, people that are good writers and uh, take note of how they're separating a sentence and so forth. 
I, I did. I, I never have, and I don't understand it. Well, I, I mean, I was looking for a map that I drew in 2017 in all my notebooks, and there I didn't count them, but there's a whole bunch of them. I couldn't find it. It's a map of the Stephen Easley Cemetery back in Kingsport, Tennessee, and uh, I spent. Uh, I called into uh, the Freakers Ball that night. I camped out in my ancestors, one of my ancestors' uh, cemeteries, and uh, cleaned the cleaned the cemetery up. That was a lot of fun. But anyways, I plotted out all the uh, the headstones, and I've got a map, and I know I've got it, and it would have to be in one of those. Maybe I've skimmed over it, and not seen it. But I was going to give that to my brother. Cause I was gonna, I'll I'll find it. I will, and I've never been able to find it so far. I hope I didn't somehow lose one notebook, but I don't recall losing a notebook ever. Well, that's the kind of thing. If you lost it, you wouldn't recall losing it. I I think I would because I knew the uh, what all I had, um, my notebooks, all of them. Well, I got a big old thing full of them now, just from two years of hauling. That didn't even count what I had from before that. And you know, yeah. I just write stuff down there because. You know, you get to, like, think of something, and then you don't remember it later. It's like, man, I wish I wrote that down. Yeah. And then you can unjumble it and make sense of it afterwards. Even. Yeah, I, I went through all of my notebook a couple of years ago and got pictures of the stuff that I thought was important and digitized all of it. So I've kind of downsized all my notebooks and have them kind of searchable. It's not, it's not a perfect system yet. I still need to kind of organize all that shit into a proper database, but I've got some huge portion of it in Evernote and that makes it easy to just, you know, look up whatever it is that I need to find. It, it makes all of the text searchable, which is the nice thing. Man, I'm such a terrible, I have terrible handwriting and spelling. Uh, it almost doesn't matter. Right? If they use humans to figure out what you're writing down if they can't do it computationally. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder what I what it is I wrote. I go, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's always those. where you, There's just not a way to get something comprehensive or comprehendable out of it but sometimes i just go ahead and put it down there even though that makes sense and like i've got a, a portion up here on my radio blog page here uh to be unjumbled and i said let me just put it up there because i've got it it seems like i've almost got to push publish before i can see the mistakes and we'll see what needs to be changed i don't know why that yeah happens. i know that feeling. hey i'm gonna mute up for a minute i'm gonna grab something to drink here i'll be right back you're good. That sounds like a good plan. I'll be right back to you. All right. Well, I, uh, let me uh, we do that. Let me take a little pause here. We're at the top of the past the top of the hour. I'm going to push pause on this record. Yeah, I was pushing things out of my way and didn't push uh, the button for record. But here we are. Yeah. Back to say bye bye and it's uh, we were saying things that we've said and we'll say again and that's okay. Uh, the other this has been the second episode of a new series uh, season. Uh, and all the other flavors you might want to shake out on this uh, taste and flavor. That, what do you call it? Oh, I'm coming up with a new one of uh, radio reading. But this is radio writing so far. So good. Things going as planned for the most part. <laughs> That's just Gura has been along with me as we've uh, we've done a little fencing just a little bit and talking about some different ideas of uh, and notions about what it is this world is all about. Tell uh, tell everybody good night. Just good old. You all have a kick ass day now, you hear? Good night, John Boy. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know what today is? Hey, yeah, I enjoy it. I will do some more with you. Listen, do you know what today is right here at Real Liberty Media? It's it's Freakers Friday, man. That's right. Come back at eleven o'clock Eastern and get to your freaking balls going. It might be against the wall, but hey, it'll be fun for y'all. Come on, no, for real. Grimner Moose Girl, I think. Let me go back to chat over here. Um, jungulum. I've, uh... <laughs> yeah, instead of Carpe Diem, Carpe Jungulum. Seize life by the throat. Ah, I like it. I like it. It's actually the title of a really good book from the Discworld series. Huh. Yeah, so that was, that's rather fitting for this uh, broadcast. So I left off, I read some stuff while, uh, while I wasn't recording, but... Um, I, I think I'll come back and do a, a short one on this. Maybe that's how I'll run this, the half portion of these, and do an extra and pull the Bundy portion of this aside. 
And, uh, yeah, the Bundy one sounds like you have a lot of material that you need to get organized, and like it, it sounds like its own, like it should be a radio pre-recorded thing that you can just play on the air. I've got like there's there's just so much to say about it. I've got uh, my own material galore, and my my it's already there. And last time I said, oh, this will be real easy. All I got this is like there it is. Go get it. Well, I'm trying again. I'm going to pick it up as I go along in chronological order here. So October was the time that it really kicked off, and then it was delayed. And I gotta, I gotta push some instructions here before I miss this opportunity. Um, I, I consider yeah, myself I have, uh, well. I, I'm an I'm actual witness. Deep. I was a witness for the federal trial for the Bundys. I was there in 2014. I was there in 2017 and 18 for the for the trial itself. Reporting. Uh, I was interviewed uh, locally. Uh, I was quoted on uh, national public radio, PBS. Uh, and I'm gonna. We got less than a minute for these instructions to go down. The instructions are fire in the hole. It is a 4:20 somewhere, and that's two hours away. So, yeah, if you're in the Atlantic Ocean, you'd be actual. All right. Yep. Well, okay, so there I was, there I was out there, and uh, I've got uh, lots of information, and I know the right people to go to to clarify any information that I may uh, have uh, found that I might need to, to know more of. I know where to go find. And I, and I got the chance to meet the, uh, the mainstream media, these big people that uh, put the words out there on the papers and stuff like that, and they... They get people to say words. I call it parroting. You know, you can hear somebody parrot these uh, words that, uh, where'd they come from? Well, it's not like you went out and picked them and plucked them yourself like fresh ripe fruit off a tree. Delicious. Mm. No, you took the crap, the clap, the scraps from the sold out peoples that they are. The, the prostitutes. The paid propagandists. And hey, maybe they believe that crap. Or maybe they don't and just want you to. Huh. Well, hey, this is a perfect time to end it. It's 20 after. Happy 420. Come on back to Real Liberty Media. Tonight, Sunday, come on along. Blues trivia. Starting at noon Eastern and 3 o'clock. Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed. You know, there's a can of whoop ass. It comes with instructions. So don't take anything for granted. Do not assume. Don't open your own can until you know you can do it safely and reliably every time. Right there. Kyle Anthony. Yes, sir. And Monday, we've got to what? Trim leftovers. There's no fresh can of whoop ass that night, buddy. Yeah, I missed half of it, Grim. Sure did. Uh, oh, well, hey. It was practice. Yeah, and I think Flash is back in a perfect world on Tuesdays. And I believe that's like se 7 o'clock his time in Denmark inland. So I'm going to calculate that to somewhere maybe uh, in the afternoon in the Americas where I'm at. Hey, go check the schedule and figure it out. And uh, see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for coming along. Just good. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll go push a button and. Buttons, buttons, I tell you. Be the death of us all. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Say big bye.